welcome to Health Live at Seniors today. We wish you a very happy Eid and Akshatitya and all the festivals that you observe on uh, uh, this day. Uh, we are delighted to have here with us Dr. Sheetal Goyal, a senior neurologist who is based in the Vokhart Hospitals of Mumbai. I'll introduce Dr. Goyal first. Dr. Goyal is a uh, as I mentioned, a well-known senior consultant neurologist in Mumbai. She has done her MBBS and MD from, in internal medicine from the Guwahati Medical College and a DM in neurology and PDF in cognitive neurosciences from the Nimans in Bengaluru. She has to her credit both national and international publications. She has also obtained separate training in the treatment of various memory and movement disorders, skills of uh, uh, a variety of toxins and deep brain solutions simulation. In fact, as I was speaking to her uh, before this session, I figured that she's one of the three, only three doctors in this country who are in the field of memory dis movement disorders. She has done many certification courses of which the prestigious ones are the VEG certification by the Indian Epilepsy Society and a one-year training, one-year learning course by the World Headache Society. She's also trained in Botox injection given for writer cramps, cervical dystonia, uh, uh, spasm. She's a former consultant neurologist in the Nimcare Speciality Hospital in Guwahati and Apollo Clinic in Guwahati again. She is currently, as I mentioned, working at the Vokhart Hospitals in uh, Mumbai. Welcome to Health Life at Seniors Today. Hello, thank you so much for calling me. Namaste. Sabko mira namaste. So, Would you like to say namaste and asmis? Namaskar. Namaskar. Yeah, and, namaskar. Uh, um, you know, it is, it is it's a pleasure to have you here, and uh, we've never we've had neurologists uh, in in the past, but we've not discussed this very important issue of uh, uh, movement disorders, right? And, and and the whole issue about uh, that we are discussing today about memory, movement, and cognitive disorders in seniors, and uh, these are these are very important issues, and I thought it would be of interest when we speak when we are speaking to. Um, uh, the people at Vokhart Hospitals, and we figured that this is a very important issue concerning seniors. We thought of inviting you. But first off, uh, what's the what's the you know since you are uh, in in Vokhart, uh, what is the COVID scene now? Is it uh, under control, or is it you know it is going up as when keeps seeing uh, uh, newspaper reports? See, if you ask me frank, uh, frankly, the public has demolished COVID because now chote mote sardi mein kabhi covid nahi kiya ja raha hai and mortality definitely is no more seen in covid so we have hardly seen any positive case in the last 4 to 5 months so it has really drastically come down that's that's a very healthy sign though one keeps hearing about uh, you know i was i was uh, hearing today that the five supreme court judges have got covid and uh, so clearly the numbers are rising but you are saying that one, the mortality rate is not very much. Second thing is, it's not as much a worry. But tell me something, and genuinely, is it, you know, is, is the fear of being, being isolated, ostracized, your domestic health not coming home, is that causing people not to get out, not, not to reveal that they have COVID? See, Frank, no, the first thing is, they will not realize they have COVID. As I told you, you know, initially COVID was very severe in nature. Now, just running nose, they consider it a seasonal disease. It will come down. And as COVID also comes down, uh, so it comes down and it goes off and they don't even realize they had COVID. So I'm not saying that public is trying to hide it. It is so mild in nature now that people are just not doing it, not thinking it as a COVID. That, that's good to know. Um, that's good to know, Dr. Goyal. So uh, before... Uh, 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 we move the, the the subject that we have requested doctor to speak on is memory movement and cognitive disorders in seniors. Uh, those of you who have specific questions on these issues, please put them in the Q and A tab. As always, uh, mention your age and your gender so that Doctor Goel could give a more considered reply. And um, she will make a presentation for around twenty minutes, and then in the meantime, we will you can send us questions the way you. Put, put across in the Q&A tab and uh, we will address them to uh, Dr. Goel. Over to you, Doctor, for your presentation. 
Thank you. Thank you. I think all are okay with both Hindi and English, right? Uh, you know, English is, is the preferred thing uh, because Got it. people from okay. South India as well. But you can put it a bit with Hindi as well. No problem. Okay. No issues. So as my uh, audience today, see, three days back, I came to know that uh, I am uh, being invited to give this talk and I felt honored about it. So I thought that I'll keep my content uh, very limited and very simple. So because I'm going to speak on memory issues and movement disorder issues, so my first content will be what are the memory issues and how to prevent it. And second will be what are the memory or uh, movement disorders that we see in elderly aged group and how to prevent it as simple. So what are the symptoms that we see commonly when someone says I have memory disturbance? You will find that the family members is telling that he cannot recollect the recent conversation, cannot recall the name of the family member, keep misplacing his spectacles, et cetera, et cetera, here and there and not able to find it, cannot recollect the items he had in breakfast. So all these comes under memory disturbance. I won't go into technical and scientific things, but today I will tell you about all the mantras that every general public can do to prevent memory disturbance in late age. So the first important thing is the physical activity. Now, I am not the one to say, I think you must be hearing it from your grandfather, grandmother time that you need to do exercise, you need to do aerobic exercise, cycling, and I too say the same. Second, there are certain yogas that are known to prevent memory disturbance. So let us come across what are those yoga. So number one is Padmasana yoga pose that you can check in. Uh, if you can see my slide, you can see what is the Padmasana pose. So I'm going to tell you all the mantras that I give to my patient to prevent memory disturbance in future. So one is the physical activity, another is the yoga pose. Then in yoga pose, we have got Padmasana, which you can see in every people who are trying to meditate, who do meditation, who start with their yoga, they start usually with Padmasana pose. It has got certain scientific relevance. It is found that if patient sits with Padmasana pose, it also somehow enhances the cognitive ability of an individual. Then we have got Paschimottasana pose. It might be tough for people who have never done, done yoga in the past, but if someone do it, it will really help them in their cognition because it helps in the, increases the circulation of blood in the brain and enhances the memory. Then we have got Halasana pose. I tell you, you those who are not doing it will find it very difficult, but these are scientifically proven poses which help in preventing memory disturbance. Another, we have got Sirsana. So why all these poses, yoga are important? Because it is found that whenever you do yoga or whenever you do physical activity like cycling, or aerobic exercise, etc., it, it, uh, it somehow causes cardiovascular exercise to that person and it improves the memory and the learning capacity of that patient. Apart from that, it has been seen that if anyone uh, practice this yoga pose or such kind of physical activity, it boosts certain chemicals in the brain, which are known as positive chemicals, which enhances memory to a large extent. So some of them are dopamine, norepinephrine, serotonin, which I have mentioned in bold. So endorphin is also increased. You know, endorphin is certain love hormone. So whenever endorphin is increased, it always gives a positive emotion in one's brain. So that's why physical activity like yoga or uh, poses or physical activity helps uh, a person from preventing memory disturbance. So what I want to say is that many a time, because I'm a doctor and I see all kinds of patients. So when they take they to smoke, they are tell me that madam I smoke because I'm too much stressed but I tell you it has been found scientifically that if you run it also decreases the stress so I would like to advise you all if you all are in the habit of smoking during stress stop smoking and start running whenever you feel stressed then we have got mental activity now you will say madam I always drive the car to my office I always do the things I always cook the same food morning breakfast is cooked by me. So I'm being mentally active, but no, that's not wrong. That's not correct. So according to neurologists, according to us, according to cognitive expert, we don't consider those as a mental active game because those are certain things that you're doing every day. So that has become very automatic in your life. So that won't be considered as a mental active. So what you can do in home, you can play with your grandchildren, different kind of puzzle game. You can uh, play with them all kind of memory card game, crossword puzzles, sukodo, jigjoso puzzles. So these all can help you keep you yourself mentally active. 
then mindful walking i won't go in detail but i'll just tell you the brief of all the things that you can do to keep yourself mentally active then suppose in your life because being a head of the family or being the only person who is earning for the family you must have got certain uh, desire to learn certain music instrument or learn certain foreign language which you could not done could not be done in your life i request you all come on come up with your all the hobbies now because you must be retired many of you must have been retired you must be free now so enjoy doing all that you wanted to do in your young age this will help a lot to keep yourself mentally active you can uh, learn the new sports do hand eye coordination along with your grandchildren and ultimately many of my patient tells no ma'am i don't want to do anything so i i always uh, request them put a song which you love the most chalo 18th century ka gana laga do and just dance whatever way you want so this also keeps you somehow physically as well as mentally active then come social life so when i say social life i don't mean that you will sit with your friend and gossip so when you say social life no uh, for me as a cognitive expert i describe it as a life where you are contributing something to the social uh, society so you will say how help uh, giving help to someone make me cognitively healthy what happens is that it has been found in the research that if you socially help someone or take active participation in society there are many things happen number one you become socially active you know how to interact you learn new skills and the most important is when you help someone there are certain positive hormones that uh, develops in your brain and that keeps you preventing from memory disturbance the another mantra is stay organized when you stay organized you don't lose time finding out the things which you are misplacing regularly and this helps you being confident with yourself therefore stay organized then what are the benefits i have told you already so sleep well is very important because if you don't sleep well in young age if you don't sleep well even then next day you can work but as we grow old no the sleep requirement becomes very important because if you if we don't sleep well if in later age we find that the, the cognitive capacity comes down to a large extent so being in 50s or 60s or above that i request that sleeping no looks ki yet it is a very simple thing how will it help in cognition but there are many many research paper which has spoke a uh, highly about sleep so please sleep well try to sleep well so benefits how it is how it benefits it reduces stress reduces inflammation boost your energy keep you alert during day maintain a health and all these psychiatry issues like depression you are prevented so what are the foods so this are this is the common question that is been asked to me in opd ma'am what are the foods that we can take which can enhance the memory so these are certain piled up i have piled up certain foods which has been research proven that they can improve the memory so you can go for avocado you can go for beetroot you can go for turmeric raw turmeric then almond which you say mamra ka badam you must be you must have heard from your grandparents then akrot it's green leafy vegetables and many more so these all are the important benefit even drinking coffee to certain amount can boost your serotonin and uplift you and prevent the cognitive disorder so rosemary walnut mamra badam i have already spoken about and the most important of all see these are all preventive now many patients as the age comes they start suffering from hypertension diabetes thyroid and many time i have seen that i don't know why but they uh, they just neglect taking medicines so i just want to show you one mri difference you can see in the right of me here the, you see these are white white patches are on those patients which have got uncontrolled hypertension and diabetes and they are very strong very notorious factor that can decrease your memory but if you can control your hypertension bp your brain will always stay healthy even if you are at age of 80s therefore i request you that if you have hypertension diabetes thyroid don't neglect it and please go to your nearby doctor and prevent it from in, uh, being uncontrolled this is certain thing that i have done research on so this is raga therapy 
see being from india and uh, born and brought up in indian culture so i have done lots of research on raga therapy and found that raga therapy has helped my patient a lot in cognitive diseases so raga therapy is also so what should be your daily routine now you will say madam okay these are the chote chote these are small small tips you gave but what should be my daily routine so your daily routine should uh, can help so there should be always a routine even if you are retired your children are taking care of the family your grandchildren goes to school you have all the excuses to give me but i tell you i am not going to take any of the excuse those who are retired i request them take a copy pen make a daily routine every day when you get up before getting out of the bed you have to make a routine that what you are supposed to do today what is the new thing you are going to do today and in what what time you will complete all your activities this will help you keep yourself cognitively active at your best so uh, lastly i want to uh, come um, i want to tell you all a very important issue which every doctors also are seen to be neglecting which are uh, which is in a very common practice there are many drugs which can cause memory issues why i tell my patients whenever they have any memory issues that please come to me is this is also one of the important reason many time memory issues is just considered as age related it must be my grandpapa my grandpa is 60s or my grandma is on 70s therefore she is losing memory is not at all a correct statement now many of the drugs that patient takes can cause memory issues so what i do is that if my patient if such patient comes to me i always check their medicines and if possible i i alternate the medicine if i know that this medicine which the patient is taking can cause the memory issues i just change it to the medicine which which cannot lead to this kind of memory issues so this way also i uh, we can help our patient a lot so this is all about memory then now coming to movement disorder Uh, as i have got two topic to speak today so what are the movement disorder commonly seen in elderly i was just uh, thinking and uh, speculating what should i say then the most common that i encountered in my life is fall many of my patient comes with fall or sometimes they say that i have abnormal sensation in my leg which prevent me from sleep the uh, third most common is the tremor the patient says that my hand keeps shaking me i am not able to catch hold of cup pencil etc or osteoarthritis so let me speak one by one in short about all of them so why do fall occur so fall occur do you think fall occur due to one reason no so fall can occur due to many reasons like if agar aapke joint if you are suffering from osteoarthritis or any kind of reactive arthritis if your bp is falling a lot so immediately when you get up you will feel giddy this is the again very common complaint that i come across patient cannot see from their eyes properly and they bump over the object in front of them because of the tremor in the leg the leg keep shaking and they cannot keep hold of them while they are standing equilibrium problem foot problem they are diabetic they are unable they are they develop sensory neuropathy they cannot sense the leg feel sensation in the leg and therefore when they keep their leg in the floor they cannot feel it and this leads them to fall then illness if no proper nutrition you are not taking care of your nutrition see you have to you have to understand when you were a kid if you don't eat whole day you just drink water also you will survive but when you uh, when anyone even me if we reach by the age of 40s 50s we have to be extra careful about our nutrition so these are very common causes of fall it is uh, it is not a small like it is not a uncommon thing that i'm speaking about if you see one out of four people of age at least 50 uh, of at least 50 65 falls every year and why i'm speaking so much about fall is that because i have seen my patient after falling has developed a big head injury bleeding under the head fracture in the femur and ultimately they have to get admitted for 15 to 20 days lots of money goes they feel so useless they feel that i am completely dependent on my family so and they start developing depression so it is a vicious cycle so i always want all of you to understand that you fall is a very uh, important thing that need to be brought down in one's life so again i say there are many medications just like those medicines which can cause memory disturbance there are a list of medicines that can cause fall so how to prevent fall these all the why fall uh, should be prevented but how to prevent it see you have to maintain your joint health 
if mm -hmm. some doctor in your early disease has told you that please go for physiotherapy i am telling you please don't neglect and hear that doctor properly physiotherapy really helps in preventing joint problem to go to a severe form then vascular risk factor like diabetes and hypertension need to be managed because diabetes can cause neuropathy hypertension can cause multiple stroke and patient develops fall avoid tobacco and alcohol see when you were young you enjoyed with your colleagues you drank alcohol no issues but you have to understand if you are at the age of 60s and 70s you need extra care for yourself so if possible please avoid tobacco alcohol sleep well avoid dwell tasking now because we are very busy now whenever we work we keep a mobile in our hand and we keep typing see young okay okay but if you are if we are growing old, we dwell tasking is not very fluent in our uh, brain. So whenever we plan for dwell tasking, we have a tendency to fall. So prevent doing dwell tasking whenever we are walking and never get up from lying down position immediately. Other tips are these all that re, uh, continuous. So whenever you are feeling like you are getting a tendency to fall, please go to a neurologist like me. Show them all the medicines. Ask them if any medicine is causing increase in their risk of fall. Then the second most common is tremor. So shakiness. See, shakiness is not bad. But you know, when the shakiness becomes so bad that you're not able to hold a glass of water or if you are being given a tea, the tea is spilling and burning your hand is not acceptable. So whenever you get shakiness, there it can be drug induced. It can be associated with other disease. So again, I'm saying don't consider it as just age problem. Please visit us. If I can help you out or any of like me, neurologist can help you out. There are certain many of us which are, we can teach you, simple medicines we can give you, which can really help you with those tremor conditions. Restless leg syndrome is certain thing, is thing which is not known by many common public, but very commonly seen. What happens, many of my patients will say that I am not able to sleep. This will be their first term. But when I go in detail, they tell me that, Madam, when I'm going to sleep, I feel some tingling sensation. I feel some ends are crawling in my leg. I feel very restless. I keep moving my leg whole night and I cannot sleep. So this is a very classical condition of restless leg syndrome, which is very easily treatable by just one or two medications. So please don't neglect these kind of symptoms where you will have some movement disorder, some abnormal paresthesia, and there are many other movement disorder which causes your decreased sleep. So just don't say it's a sleep disorder. Come to a neurologist, work it out, and then I think your sleep disorder will immediately get vanished. Then Parkinson disease, as we were discussing before the start of this. See, many times tremor means it is just a tremor. No. So if the patient, why, when will say a patient has Parkinson? When, the, when you will realize that your grandpa or grandma or you yourself is starting to wet or uh, lost the weight or your your friend started telling you hey uh, like arvin hey arvin your face look was so this so expressive earlier but now you look so dull are you depressed is there everything all right in your home but you are in reality not depressed this is also a very common symptom that is seen in parkinson so if anyone is complaining and looking at you and telling all these things you have become very slow in walking very slow in getting up these all are symptoms of parkinson please visit a neurologist again i tell you simple medicines can make your life very easy here so there are various drugs as i have i am continuous continuously telling you there are certain drugs that can cause movement disorder memory disorder everything cannot be disease it can be just drug induced. If you change the drug, your life is easy. So you can always consult a neurologist whenever you are developing new symptoms and just tell them about the entire medication list and if we can change and uh, prevent you from further worsening with those tablets. So in miscellaneous, uh, see movement disorder I told separately, memory disorder I told separately, but what are the conditions where both memory disorder and movement disorder can be helped? Number one is your family support. See, your family is your backbone. Always be with your family. Always keep cheering. It will increase your emotional hormones. If you have a grandchildren, you will have some goal to achieve. That today I'm supposed to teach my grandchildren a badminton. Tomorrow I'm supposed to teach my grandchildren bicycle. So it will always keep you motivated and always keep you going. And you will feel healthy. You will feel very young, even at the age of 60 and 70. This I can tell from my grandparents' experience. Osteoarthritis is something which is neglected. Many times, if the, the uh, orthopedic tells 
someone that you need knee replacement people hesitate a lot and i have seen two three years pass by they don't do uh, knee replacement see if someone has osteoarthritis and to a uh, extent they cannot do even if the patient has parkinson i will not be able to help so if someone has advised because if you have osteoarthritis you will not be able to work easily so you will always feel a burden inside you come going from your room to toilet will be a very difficult task for you so whenever needed please go for anything that medically we are there to help you out with how hearing difficulty this is another difficulty people are not able to hear they think that it's okay thoda thoda to sunai deta hai it's okay i can make out but i'm telling you it has been uh, research proven that if you have hearing difficulty somewhere it decreases your memory because you're not able to express yourself you feel socially isolated people your friend is telling you three four times you're not able to understand what that uh, your friend is telling your friend will laugh at you or either they will stop talking to you they will feel your arrogant but the reality is you're not able to hear so if you have any difficulty in hearing go to your nearby ent doctor take the hearing aid and make your life easy how yoga can help why i have spoken uh, why am i going to speak about this uh, like i'll just take five more minutes because i am a certified raj yoga trainer from heartfulness i am meditating from last 20 years and from last 7 years i am teaching people meditation though i am a neurologist but i really i am very i speak very fondly about meditation because i myself have been doing it and i know how beneficial it has been in my life so uh, in short i will tell you yoga are many so maharishi patanjali has found out our yoga where we have read about his books so when i not go in detail there are ashtang yoga this is hatha yoga you must have known about uh, sri ramdev baba ji so he teaches us hatha yoga there is bhakti yoga who is a li li the uh, example is our meera bai then karma yoga which we all are doing i am doing right now you all are hearing so you are doing the karma of hearing i am doing the karma of speaking janana yoga where you read with vedas bible quran bhagavad gita and you learn about the you learn about the inter eternal knowledge then we have got lai yoga muladhar chakra people want to enlighten it they have there are many sansthas who are doing and then ultimately the most superior of all is the raj yoga which where we uh, completely practice the meditation so let us speak about meditation how it is it helps in movement disorder and memory disorder so basically when a person meditate they start living in present so this uh, prevents them from past life stress and from future stress as well so they become very free minded when you will speak to a person who do regular meditation you will find they are very lively they are living at the present so meditation teaches them to live in the present there are many other benefit which just my one hour slide also cannot uh, cover but still it helps in decreasing the stress and many it also decreases your breathing rate it slows down your heart rate it makes your heart functioning well and many other things so there are many many and many more it helps you become your best friend is something which i have highlighted in red because this is the truth meditation makes you feel very comfortable in yourself so meditation like you see what stress you have you need to buy a house or you need to get your grandchildren married or you need a home loan or you need to take care of your children or your children is not hearing you there are so many things which i cannot even describe you it's all individual stress so how stress then ultimately manifest in irritability they'll say ki i don't want to talk to my grandfather because he is becoming very irritable but they don't understand the stress that you have but why they need to understand if you meditate your stress will come down and you will no more be irritable so basically how uh, uh, so if scientifically speaking being a neurologist it basically regulate the amygdala which is responsible for all your fearfulness or your anxiety or your depression so in short meditation takes care of your uh, prevents you from depression anxiety anger irritability and what not so uh, meditation helps you lead a healthy life successful family career etc i won't go so this is in short about meditation so please come to vocat if you have any doubt i'll be more 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 than happy to discuss more and more about all these topics thank you so much thank you very much thank you very much for a very detailed presentation i think uh, you touched upon many issues and uh, it also is good to hear that you know uh, 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 a medical and allopathic uh, 
a doctor like yourself has been such a strong votary of uh, of yoga and yeah. uh, uh, that that's a good 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 thing to know uh, so yeah so it was very good to good to, good to see your presentation i'm going to uh, 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 before we continue before we ask all the questions uh, as always uh, uh, to all of you here the edited video will be up on the seniors today website along with the takeaways and the takeaways as you know are written by a medical practitioner a doctor and uh, uh, so they will be up on the website on uh, on on monday evening and you can have a look at that the video of course will be there on the website on 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 youtube but i would always recommend that you uh, look at the takeaways as well because that that kind of uh, uh, compresses everything that the doctor has said and they'll be there here so those of you who have found the slides moving too fast or who do not remember what uh, uh, what 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 they were please do not worry they will be there on the website uh, very soon and you can have a look at uh, everything all over again uh, mm -hmm. over there you can pause you can uh, take screenshots and and everything um so uh, uh so so doctor there's a there's a an anonymous attendee who asked do antidepressant medicines cause memory loss yes they do see antidepressant medicine if uh, memory memory issues can be due to multiple factors if uh, a person is suffering from med uh, depression you will see that they also have memory lapse so in those conditions only if you give antidepressant they will improve in their memory but per se if memory disturbance is a separate entity then they will worsen more with the antidepressant you got it no if a memory a memory disturbance is secondary to depression then antidepressant medicines will help otherwise it will worsen uh tell me doctor about memory disorder now for instance just to give you an example i may not remember who was the you know who were the doctor we had invited for last week's health webinar right okay now in case i have forgotten is that something i should be worried about no see uh, if this is the only thing only incident then you are not supposed to worry and one more thing is like uh, there is a difference between memory and inattention which people always call it and say it's a memory disturbance if patient is telling me that madam i was i went to kitchen to uh, bring something which i am telling you from my patient's history only they say that madam my kitchen gayi i wanted to bring something and when i went to kitchen i just forgot why i came here i again came back to my room and i remembered it and then i went and i brought it this is not memory disturbance this is basically inattention so in such patients i always say that when you are doing one work don't see like dwell tasking i told you no you are working and doing mobile similarly if you are mentally dwell tasking even in young age you will find this problem so uh, as my guru also teaches that we should always do one thing at a time so when you are going to kitchen you be that you are going to get it but if you are thinking thousand things multiple applications are open in your brain so no, it will just go off and that is just inattention that you just have to take care of your uh, multiple thinking that's all right uh to uh, uh ms madhu and mr ajay khetarpal uh you know i know you the slides may have moved fast for you don't worry as i mentioned they will be there on youtube today itself and they will be there on the um, on the seniors today website uh, on monday and you can have a look at uh, See, not my fault na huh? i was told that i have to speak within 15 20 minutes and 3 days back i was told i can speak to 40, i can speak in 45 minutes so my slides were according to 45 minutes i piled up in 20 minutes absolutely <laughs> it was my fault uh, no, no. You know, but uh, but but yeah but the thing is that you know we also wanted uh, uh, to have uh, enough uh, time for questions and which is why we restrict yeah. the no the no i'm just kidding and uh, yeah. the entire session should be 40 45 minutes is what we want yeah, yeah. okay oh. uh, uh, there is a question from mr sudhir shivasta he is yeah. 64 he says of all the of the four asanas mentioned of the four asanas mentioned what should be avoided by hypertensive persons i think that uh, halsana and sirsana sirsana should be avoided 
I think you, uh, for hypertensive people, not I think, it is that for hypertensive people, all this dangerous sirsana should not be practiced. It is always good if they practice that normal cycling, jogging, etc. Right. <clears throat> uh, this is a question from Mr. Basavraj. He says he's 68. I'm quite healthy. Okay. Greatly forgetting names of friends, people met, associated with people, etc. Uh, please advise what I, what he should do. Yes. So uh, you forget the name, but if someone gives you a clue or someone tells you that, uh, hey, you remember my name is this. So do you feel that, oh yeah, I can remember it? If yes, then you are not supposed to worry because with age, nominal, FH, nominal this uh, forgetting names is very common, which I don't, which we don't consider as a very serious issue. All right. Uh, doctor, this is an anonymous attendee. Uh, what causes restless legs in sleep? You mentioned it. And yes. What could be what could be done to get a good night's sleep? Yeah. So, uh, see, restless leg syndrome can be genetic, can be due to iron deficiency, can be due to uh, this one dopamine deficiency, or can be certain. Many times we don't know the cause. So, restless leg syndrome, here the patient will feel very uneasy, some tingling paresthesia, and they will specifically say that when they start walking, that paresthesia goes off. So, this is the nature how the restless leg syndrome presents. So, causes are many. So, we uh, we find out what is the iron profile, whether there is iron deficiency. So, we treat in that line plus symptomatically. Regarding your another question that what can I do to get good sleep? So, there is a condition which is known as sleep hygiene. See, I cannot tell all the points. It is very much available everywhere in internet. You can go and say, what are the sleep hygiene? Example, I'll tell you, the place where you sleep, don't do any work over there. That particular place should only be for your sleep. You should not keep in bed any books or anything. It should be very clean. It should be spacious. You should have a fixed time to sleep. You should sleep in dim light. You should not use the mobile for at least two hours, which is not possible in today's generation. It is not possible. You should not use coffee uh, just uh, in the evening or immediately before sleeping. So these are certain sleep hygiene that we advise for our patients. And the place should be clean. Right. We have another question from uh, somebody who has uh, doesn't want to reveal uh, uh, her or his name is I do CBT for my depression with my psychologist. My question is, is there something that neurology can add that psychiatrists can't do? I'm a bipolar patient for 38 years. And in mania, I can do a, the Sudoku in 30 seconds. But the same Sudoku is done in three to four minutes. Otherwise, why? And does run, running of the vagus nerve calm you down? See, run, uh, rubbing of vagus nerve, calming down is nowhere something that uh, we practice or we ask the patient because vagus nerve is a very tricky nerve. It takes care of your entire functioning of the heart. If you, uh, I'll give you an example. If you, uh, so many of them, no, they will use the bud to clean their ear. You will see many times the children get fainted because the vagal nerve even runs from there. Sometimes if we rub it too much, the vagal nerve gets stimulated, the heart started uh, get start uh, slow, beating slowly. So we don't ask for any such kind of maneuver. Yeah, many times bipolar syndrome can be associated with many other neurological conditions. So if it is as bipolar per se is treated by psychiatrist, but if this associated neurological conditions, obviously it can help. And obviously meditation also helps in bipolar. That's a very crystal clear and you know definite answer that you have so where does the psychiatrist's uh, role end and when does a neurologist's uh, role come in you know that uh, we have a question from mr shrikant kulkarni who is 71 he says uh, i learned that the left hand for activities normally done by by the right enables strengthening of the right brain and hence the memory yes. do you agree oh absolutely there is one condition, uh, there is one uh, you must be knowing if you go in internet, uh, search about brighter minds. So here what we are doing is, I am not doing, but I am because I am in a, I'm a hurtfulness uh, uh, trainer. So I can say it's my ashram doing. So basically what we do is that less than 15 year children, they are given training for six to 
three to four months or something like that, where they are taught how to activate their right brain. And uh, there are certain maneuvers that they do. They will do like that, they will do like that. So there are so many maneuvers. And this way they enhance their right side of the brain and following which you will see the children becomes very cognitively active, very smart in school. And even they can close their eyes, they can just touch the ball and tell the color of that ball. See, you will feel like, oh, I'm telling about magic. It is not magic. What happens is that we have got circuits in our brain. So basically our eye circuit get connected to the occipital lobe and we can perceive the color. So when you do all this exercise, so right side is also activated, then that connectivity also starts with your touch. Your touch connectivity also goes to the occipital lobe and you can feel the color. So definitely I'm yes for it. And I know it works. Right. Uh, we have a question from Katie Daganji and I better ask her, otherwise she'll roast me. <laughs> her question is, what is the reason for getting occasional cramps in the calf muscle at night? Any remedy that you can suggest? There are many causes like vitamin deficiency, uh, decreased activity, varicose vein, uh, veins, then uh, many a time uh, in uh, like decreased activity as I told mainly. So what we do and dehydration. So we look after what is, what is their past history and even sometimes neuropathy. So when patient comes to me, I look after all these causes and whichever cause I find associated with the cramps, I treat that cause. Right. Um, doctor, another question from an anonymous attendee who is 74. Because where can one find good cognitive exercises? Good cognitive? Exercises. Oh, so you can come to me. <laughs> the answer is very <laughs> simple, but what if he is not in Mumbai? Okay. See, cognitive exercises, usually I do cognitive stimulation therapy to all my patients. And as I told you, we cognitive experts are very few in India. So you tell me from where are you, if I can help you out, I'll let you know. <laughs> You know, these days, as uh, we've learned at COVID, in the COVID pandemic period, doctors are available over um, Zoom sessions like these. Yeah. And uh, so you can always consult with uh, yes. Dr. Sheetal Goyal at, uh, uh, at the Wokhart Hospitals. She had uh, given her email address at the, uh, on her live slide. And when we do the, uh, when you see the takeaways, and that's the advantage of reading the takeaways, we will have the email address uh, and the contact coordinates of Dr. Goel in that. Uh, there is a question from Mr. Satish Kalya, who is uh, 78 years old. He says he hasn't done any yoga asana so far. He does walking exercise, but I find it hard to do it, to do any asana. Should I now start doing asana at this age? He said he is 78. See, if your joints are permitting you, you ask your joint knee joint are you okay with me doing this exercise <laughs> telling you frankly you're laughing but i'm telling you this is actually you should ask yourself you are your best friend and you know yourself the best and one more thing i'll tell you i had recently just three four days back one lady coming to me very young she went to gym and she came with severe uh, lower limb pain because she walked in the treadmill for 10 kilometers see anything cannot be done on day one you cannot be a marathon runner in one day you can do everything if your joint is permitting, your health is permitting, but in a very slow pace. It is not that on day one you are going to do the biggest asanas like Ramdev moving all the stomachs. No, no, no. Even I can't do that. So you ask yourself, go slow, steady, if you can do. Better is meditation also. <clears throat> Absolutely. Uh, this is a question from Mr. Ajay Ketapal who says, Doctor, is there, if there is stiffness in legs, especially the ankles, toes and at the night time, especially before bed, is it an orthopedic issue or a neurological issue? It's and is it about issue with nerves in the legs, ankle and foot? Yes. See, stiffness per se is not an issue of uh, joint. It is either with the nerve which is over-functioning, uh, which we say like corticospinal. So it, it is not basically a function of joint. It is basically a neurological problem. I think you should go and visit a neurologist nearby. If in Mumbai, you can come to me. Because uh, stiffness cannot be caused by joint. But yeah, one more thing I'll tell you, like if you have got severe joint pain, then you will try to restrict the movement of the knee joint. That time you'll try to keep your legs straight. If you're meaning that as a stiffness, then it can be, if stiffness is due to severe pain, then it can be due to joint issues. Right. 
Thank you. We have a question from Mr. Dinesh Pariwal, mm. who's 71. He says, mm. I had shingles six months back, still getting pain. It mm. raises chances of Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, and memory issues. What mm. precautions can he take? Yeah. Um, see, uh, per se, singles cannot cause memory issues, doesn't cause movement disorder, nothing. Singles post herpetic neuralgia is something what you're talking about by your history, you're telling me that. So post herpetic neuralgia, I can understand you must be in a very terrible state. It is very treatable, means uh, it can come down a lot by tablets like gabapentin. So it is treatable. That's a good news for you. So I think you should go and get it treated. Even Botox works on these singles, which I give to my patient. So no, it, don't be worried about your movement disorder, memory. But one thing I'll tell you, any patient who is having chronic pain syndrome are known to have decreased memory function. Secondary to pain, because in pain, they are in distress. Again, I said distress, depression, and their cognition comes down. So it can work secondarily, but not directly it causes memory disturbance. Right. Um, doctor, there is uh, somebody who is, says who is 65 and um, uh, she or he has worked for 35 years and says, but I don't remember the names of many of my colleagues. Whereas my friends remember that. And that worries uh, uh, this person. <laughs> See, uh, after a certain age, to remember a person whom you have seen once or twice is some, something you are not to be worried about. If you are a very far distant friend, you met after two, three years and you are not able to recall the name is absolutely okay. Don't take stress about it. But if it is a very close person, very close, like your, great, your son, your wife, or someone with whom you're meeting daily and then you're forgetting, then you have to be a little worried and you have to look after your, we have to check for your cognitive examination that whether there is other hidden uh, problems which you're not able to take it out. Okay. I, what I mean by problem is that other, there are certain, see, in cognitive testing, when we do know, there are many things that come out which patient is not aware of that, oh my God, I'm forgetting this also. So I'm saying about cognitive testing. Right, doctor, it's already 5.45, but I'll take five minutes more. Uh, there are quite a few questions that have come in. Um, this is from Rudy Gandhi. He says he's in Delhi, he's 62. Uh, his question is, do you do online consulting? And also second question is, does COVID affect neurotransmitters? He says he's had COVID three times and the effect COVID has had on him is he coughs every night, every night only. This is Mr. Ravi Gandhi, who is 62. He cuffs, cuff, cough, you say? Yeah. Okay. See, uh, firstly, I have uh, I have written a article in one of the newspaper where I spoke ex extensively about the memory disturbance that my patient has faced after COVID. So obviously, it affects the memory due to through various uh, modalities. Some patient develops autoimmune pathology. Some due to direct viral infection, uh, they affect the memory cells of the brain. So yes, uh, that's a truth and that's a bad part that yeah, COVID has affected the memory. Regarding your coughing at night may not be related. So whenever my patient, uh, like because I'm also an MD medicine, so I used to get this such kind of patients. So whenever these patients complain me that when they lie down, they have cough or when they sleep, they do cough. Many times it is found that this happens because of gastritis. What happens is that you know, whenever there's acidity or something, in simple language, I'm using that acidity or something. So what happens is that you know, the acidity, they percolate through the, uh, through the breathing space. And because to uh, expel it out, patient starts coughing, number one. So you have to look uh, strongly into that part. You might, you can take some uh, like PPI, pentoprazole or something and check out if it goes off. Or if you are staying in AC and sleeping in air condition, I think you should cut down, increase the temperature. Right. Uh, thank you, doctor. Uh, this is Mr. Sushil Kumar who asked, doctor, does taking one teaspoon of cold-pressed coconut oil daily help in memory loss cure? It is good for health. So if your health is overall good, uh, nothing, I have not found anything related directly to memory. 
Right. Uh, this is an anonymous attendee who is aged 84. He says he does not have any problem such as high BP sugar. But his difficulty is, his or her difficulty is that he's not, that they're not able to sleep well and uh, would like some suggestions. Yeah. So what happens? No. Uh, after retirement, people have pura 12 hours free. They, uh, many times they will uh, just sit idle, do nothing. So, no, I'm not saying about uh, the person who's asking me question. I'm saying you as a whole. I'm saying in a broad way. So, the first thing is when you want to sleep well, you have to work hard during day. Either mentally or physically to make you sleep well. Mehnat karne ke baad ka jo neend aata hai, you cannot compare it with any other thing. Number one. Number two, when you are retired, you feel that the whole day is free. So, din mein bhi do ghanta so lete hai. Teen ghanta so lete hai. So, how you will get sleep at night? So, uh, such patient, I always uh, tell, please, if you're sleeping during day, stop sleeping during day. Tell that I'll sleep only night. Third thing, many times as the age goes by, the requirement of sleep comes down. Like uh, to a child, you see, they will sleep 12 hours, 14 hours. As we become very active, energetic, we sleep eight hours like that. So when, as the age goes by, the sleep uh, comes down. So usually only three, four hours or five, six hours, you have to ask yourself, uh, if I've slept only four hours, whether these four hours was healthy for me, whether I'm feeling sleepy during day, if the answer to any of this is no, 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 then it's okay. Don't worry too much about it. Right. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. We have a few questions which have come in from Mr. Sri Krishna Agrawal and uh, Ms. Shada Malviya, which we are not going to take now because they are very... No problem. Specific. One thing, I do online consultation. As you have right. asked one answer, I forgot to tell. Right. I do online consultation, but I am always very happy when they come physically because I ask them thousand questions. But uh, online, you know, you have certain limitations. I cannot touch them. Being a neurologist, now our examination is never complete till I touch. So... Uh, I feel a little insecure that, oh, I, I, I don't want to miss anything when some patient comes under my name. So I'm always happy to do uh, physical, but yeah, online I do for my old patients from Assam, Bangalore, Kolkata. They all are doing online consultation with me. Right. Thank you very much, Dr. Goel, for your time. We've taken yeah. almost an hour uh, here and, and the few minutes that you joined uh, before that, and you've answered all the questions so well. Uh, you have uh, your presentation, not one, but uh, uh, three of them were very detailed and uh, explained everything well. And it was good to know that, you know, you are so much into meditation and yoga. So uh, that's something which is, um, will also help all our, uh, 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 our readers and, 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 and viewers over here. Thank you very much once again. And thank you to Bokhat Hospitals to facilitate this. And uh, we will call... Uh, call on you once again for uh, another session on, on, on neurological issues and uh, 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 until then thank you very much and to all of you here we will be back once again uh, with a session on health live at seniors today next Saturday at 5 p.m. Thank you very much Dr. Sheetal Gurel. Thank yeah. you very much. My pleasure. Thank you so much. Yeah. Subscribe now and press the bell icon. Never miss an update.